Hello again, everyone. Today I wanted to show you some new products that I purchased from Archer and Olive. The, this first one is on the screen now and it's Acrylograph Markers. These are the smaller tipped ones, which are three millimeter. And it also comes in, I think, an eight millimeter, but I wanted the, the smaller ones, which is good because it's all they had in stock at the time <laughs> that I ordered. So I am going to test these out, but I also wanted to show you this. Um, so I have done a video about all of my uh, Speckled Fawns Chatelaine model traveler's notebooks, which is what this is. This is a Chatelaine in the narrow or standard size, but it's two different names for the same size. And this one was not in that video because I had purchased it after I made the video. <laughs> so um, so I wanted to show you this, but I have another Archer and Olive product in here, so it's all related. So um, I, I will put a link down below to that uh, video where I talk about my collection of Chatelaines from Speckled Fawns, but uh, I'll just briefly touch on what the hallmarks are of this particular model, which is a pocket in the front, this little band that is a closure, and then inside there is uh, a folio pocket, a secretarial pocket, and then there is this zipper pocket in the back here. So I don't have anything in the zipper pocket or the pockets up front, but I do have, and I just noticed that the elastics were twisted here. So I do have this notebook by uh, Archer and Olive in here, and this is a new size for them. So before this, they carried B6, A5, and I think B5, which is almost a composition size. And, um, and I think now they actually have a little square size too, but I, th I think it's five by five, but don't hold me to that. I'll put a link to the shop down below. But this is a new size and it is the narrow size, but it's a book size. Um, ins well, it's not an insert, it's a book, <laughs> but I'm using it as an insert in this narrow traveler's notebook. So I really like having larger notebooks in my traveler's notebooks just because then I can use it as a journal and not have to change out the inserts that often and all of that. And I also really like that this has a pen loop. This notebook has a pen loop with it and this traveler's notebook does not have a, a, a pen loop. So it's really nice to have this on here so now I can have a little pen loop to hold a pen. I don't have a pen in it currently because I pretty much just put this notebook in. I uh, took some watercolor inserts out of here in order for this to fit. And this won't fit in all narrow size notebooks. I have not tried it in a Chic Sparrow and I bet you it would fit because they tend to be very generous in their sizing. Um, I also tried it in a Sojourner narrow in, the, in their normal narrow size and it did not fit in, in the Sojourner. So, um, so the ones that, and like I said, I haven't tried it in a, in a narrow Chic Sparrow, but their, their narrows are wider than the speckled fonts. So I think it's pretty much a given that that will fit in there. I was very pleasantly surprised though that it fit in here because then I can just have that one insert and then I can use the back pocket for things. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to test these markers out in the Archer and Olive notebook because uh, I want to test it out on this paper and I'm also going to test these markers out on black paper. So to do that I am going to get out my all black, my all black, my all black notebook. I did a video on this one as well and I'll put the link to that below but this has all black paper in it so I am going to test out these acrylograph markers on the black paper because supposedly it works well with the black paper as well. So I think what, and I've already labeled it and set aside a page here in this little Moleskine accordion notebook. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and have both of these open at the same time. And I think I'm going to put this test towards the back just because I'm not sure what I'm going to be using this notebook for yet. So I'm gonna try and do it on this last page here. So let's get these markers out from under. And I'm pretty sure I can do both of these at once by just having them next to each other like that. 
So um, it comes in this packaging. There was some plastic over it, which I took off. And then it comes in this little sort of booklet style. I probably will not keep this packaging just because um, it seems a little big for the amount of markers that are in here. And I just noticed that there's a little, oh, so these are replacement nibs. Oh, that's very nice. Um, because nibs do go bad on markers occasionally, although, you know, usually at that point you, you've also run out of ink or you're just about running out of ink. So I'm going to take that out and then I'm going to take each of these markers out. And I do believe that there is a white one. Yeah. So there's a white one as well. That's part of why I was excited about that. I also really liked the color scheme here because it, it called them the jewel palette, I think. And this says it's a blending palette. Um, so let's see. So I'm gonna read the little instructions here. So I've taken all the pens out. I'm gonna put them up here. I'm going to put my little nib replacements somewhere where I won't lose them. Um, for now, I'm just gonna put them in a little pencil tray that's on my desk. That's what I use to corral things here. So it says, so how to blend. Apply ink to palette. Hold the pen tip at 90 degrees. Press down on the blending palette firmly until the desired amount of ink comes out. Mix and paint. Use the blending pen to mix colors. Apply new color to your page. Clean and store. <clears throat> Clean the tip of blending pen by running it under water. Okay, and then um, tips for blending. Ink, ink dries quickly, so work in a small amount of time. Blending. Pen tips can be rinsed clean in water and wiped with a rag. If blending with a colored acrylograph, apply the darker ink to the palette and mix and pick up the lighter color pen. Be sure to thoroughly clean tip. Okay, so I think I get what, what they're saying. So um, you need a little, oh, and so that's what this is here. This is the blending palette page, okay. So I don't know that I'm gonna do that today. Let me see how long it takes me to get through just testing the markers out. And then I might do the blending uh, thing. Given that, I'm wondering if I should store them in this um, case, given that it's, it can be used with this blending palette. I wasn't really aware of that. Let me put the little nibs back in here, in the, in the package here. I'm gonna close this up for the time being. Um, so for each one, we should shake it before use, press uh, until the ink flows. Oh, so I might want to press it on here. Gently wipe off the tip with a rag. Wider tips are for covering larger work surfaces such as backgrounds. Fine tips are, for, are great for detail work. So that's kind of what I wanted them for, for doodling and that sort of thing. And for layering over watercolor. Um, I don't have some samples of watercolor handy, or do I? I actually, I think I might. Actually, hold on. <laughs> so I have this little piece here that I had um, cut up from a prior mixing video that I did of watercolors. So I'll try layering over these and see how it looks. Um, obviously this may not be the color I would choose to layer with the markers, but I did want to make sure it actually layered over watercolor, so I will test that. All right, if ink is too transparent, wipe off the tip and shake the pen several more times. Repeat until opaque. All right, so I'm going to leave this blending palette open over here a little bit off camera. And I'm going to keep these watercolor swatches there. Sorry for the long setup here. I <laughs> just want to make sure I'm using them properly. So there is a blending pen, which I assume is this. Yeah, which is this one, because it's empty. So, um, and, and if I don't end up, yeah, and it's completely dry. So if I don't end up doing this today, I think what the point is, is you pump the markers on the paper to release, or on the paper here, to release some of the pigment that's in here, which I believe is sort of like an acrylic ink and then you put another color in and then you can blend it and then you can write with it with this marker, um, which is empty and is just for doing the mixed colors. And then you'd wipe, wipe it off or rinse it off. So I'm not sure that I'm gonna be doing that today. I might still use the blending palette to get the markers going, 
just so that I can um, get them to work if they don't end up working right away. And these do not have color names, so I think we're just left with whatever the color is on the cap for identifying them. So I'm just gonna shake these up a little bit, one by one, and then I'm gonna arrange them in some sort of color order. And this is true of most acrylic markers that you will have to shake them like this before you use them. And it's really just to make sure that the pigment doesn't separate from whatever binder is in here. So let's see, and you can't see where I have lined them up. I'm going to start with the, I'll just put them upside down so you can see the tops of them there. So I'm gonna start with the white, go with this, I'm gonna go with this pink, peachy color, or yellow. Then let's go into green, and we'll go into blue, dark blue, and then red. So I really liked the look of the color palette here. So let's see if that is... Okay, so what I'm doing is I am pumping the tip here to get the marker flowing. Okay, and I can see that there is a little bit of ink that is coming out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this on the black paper first because it's the white. Oh, that's actually really nice. It's actually really nice. Okay, and I think I'll do that same pattern with all of them. I'm not gonna do the white on the white paper because you're not gonna be able to see it, obviously. But that's actually a very nice white marker. Oh, and let me try it on the watercolor. So I don't wanna smear what I've already done here. So let's see. Oh, and it layers quite nicely over the watercolor, so that's great. The only thing to be aware of is you are gonna get a little bit of discoloration on the end of your tip because of the watercolor. Um, let's see, I think I might just wipe that off a little bit down here on the bottom of the page. And yeah, so now it's pretty much clean. Although, so one thing, you probably cannot tell this because it's way too small, but when I was just wiping this off, it is actually covering the dots on the page. So it is pretty opaque. All right, so that's the white. And I'm gonna try this pink peachy color here. I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna kind of pump it here on the blending palette. And I don't have a paper towel handy, but after we're done here, I will wipe this off. And you can see, you can see the color coming down the nib now. Kind of filling up that nib with color. Okay, and now I can see a little bit here. So I'm gonna try the black paper first. That's really pretty too. All right, and I'm also gonna try this pink color. Oh, and it looks really pretty on the white paper too. And I'll give you a close up of these before I end. I'm just doing these side by side like this now so that you can see the comparison between black and white paper. And I'm not gonna do any mixing today. Um, and I'm not gonna do any more testing over watercolor, but uh, I think just based on this little test that it will indeed work over watercolor. Okay, so this is sort of a peachy color. And what's kind of nice about when you pump these markers um, is that, okay, so see, you can see again you can see really, oh, sorry, you can see again, it's really easy to tell when the marker is brand new, whether the color is going down in there because it's sort of taking over the white of the dry nib. Um, what's really nice about these is they don't seem to completely flood out of the marker. Um, even with Posca pens, which is another um, really kind of well-known brand of acrylic marker, I find and it looks like we've got some pigment coming there, you can see. I'm gonna go ahead and draw that. I find, and it probably wasn't all the way loaded there. I find that uh, when I'm trying to prime the marker, which is kind of what I call that, uh, pumping there, is that 
it, uh, it sometimes will just run out all over onto the page or, you know, whatever surface I'm trying to do that on, which is a little annoying because then you're wasting all that ink that's flooding out onto the paper. And these don't seem to do that. So that's kind of nice. Um, and I think for this one, I had not fully primed it. So we're not getting the full opaque nature here in the curly cues, but you can definitely see it in the lines below. And I'm not gonna write over that again, but. Okay, and this is sort of looks like almost like a yellow ochre color by the cap, but let's see. So I'd say both of these were sort of pastel-y. Um, it's kind of harder to tell the color variations on the black paper. They're not as brightly colored on the black paper. Okay, so I'm just going to prime this the same way. Um, one thing that I'm noticing when I am priming like this, let's see again, you can see it flooding into the white nib there, which is kind of cool to watch because then you can actually see it go down into the nib. Um, one of the things that I'm noticing when I'm doing that is that the nib seems to smoosh a little bit. And I think that's kind of what led to this little um, texture here. Um, so I'm wondering how durable these nibs really are. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. And so far, I'm really digging the color palette. I like it. All right, I'm gonna go with the lighter green next. And see, that's almost looking green, that last color on the black paper. Okay, same process for pretty much all of these. Pumping to prime. And that one, I was trying to get going a little bit faster. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's a very nice light green. And that got really opaque really fast. So let's see. And I'm getting a little messier on the white paper just because I'm at a weird angle with my hand there. So that's really pretty. I don't even know how I would describe that because it's not really minty. I would say it's more like a green earth color. Okay, and this is a, a slightly darker green. So I'm gonna go ahead and pump to prime yet again. And that one, oh, that one got going right away. I think I was being a little hesitant in the beginning, so that could also be me just not wanting to hurt the marker. Okay, and that's definitely more of an olivey green. I really like that color. And these are sort of unusual colors for acrylic markers too. They have a more typical um, sort of bright primary palette available too, but um, these sort of subdued colors appeal to me much more. And I'm hoping I can wipe these off, these little dots here off once I have, um, oh, and this one is taking longer. So maybe it wasn't me, maybe it was just the color. Um, so I'm hoping that it'll come off just with either a wet cloth or maybe even a dry cloth, depending on what this surface is made of, okay? So I'm working on it, but see, the more I do that, the more I prime it and push it, it seems to smush the nib a little bit. So I'm not too happy about that. Um, Okay, I think we're ready to go. Because see, every time I smush the nib a little bit, it tends to get a little bit more feathery in how it writes. Okay. I'm surprised that these are the smaller ones because this seems like a pretty thick line to me. The bigger, bigger ones must be pretty big. Okay, and this is a darker blue. So let's see. And the nib itself, you can see the ink starting, starting to flow there. <laughs> but there was a little something on the nib, so I tried to get that off before the ink came into it. But that nib was a little um, wonky, I felt. Um, but yeah. The more I'm using this, the more I'm kind of happy that they included those extra nibs. Okay, that's gonna be pretty dark 
here, although it's showing up on the camera, you can still see. And so this paint or this ink should um, be permanent when dry, as with most acrylic inks. So like if you're going over watercolor, you're not gonna be able to blend that into the watercolor once it's dry. Uh, so this I think would be sort of a finishing layer. Okay, so this is sort of a wine color according to the cap. Let's see how accurate that is. So yeah, and that one came out pretty fast too. Okay, yeah, you can still see. That's lovely. And I will put these up to the camera before I end here, because we're about there. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so now we've seen what they look like on black and white paper. I would say based on the, just this little demo, they're, they're really nice. Um, <clears throat> I would say that this is comparable to a Posca pen. So here you go, on black paper. I'm gonna get even closer here. Let me get some things out of the way here. Sorry about that. And it's a really good white marker. Okay, and again, they don't have any color names. So I'm gonna put that off to the side there. And then I'm gonna show you this one. And I'm gonna show you the back of the page too. I can't show you the back of the page of the black paper because it's um, accordion style and I'd have to take the whole notebook out of the traveler's notebook in order to show you the back. So I'm not gonna do that, but I will show you the back here. So as you can see, there is no bleed through at all, which is pretty good for this paper because a lot of papers can't withstand this sort of um, thicker paint marker. So there you go. So that's all of them tested. Let me see if they're dry. Yeah, it seems like they dry really fast. So I can go ahead and close this book right away. And um, at least for the acrylic markers, this paper works really well. I've had sort of mixed results with fountain pens on this paper that they use. I think it's pretty much the same paper in every notebook unless, um, unless it says it's watercolor paper or unless it says, you know, it's specifically a different paper. They also have a black paper notebook, which I purchased, but I wasn't all that impressed with the quality of that black paper. So I, th I think their quality kind of varies, but the white paper is pretty good. It's really thick. I think it's 180 GSM. I think that's what they said it was. Um, I can't remember, but it'll tell you in on the website down below. And the notebook comes with these two little bookmarks here, which are still kind of tucked in because this is a new, let me see if I can get those out from where they are. Oh, and this one even has a little, like a little charm on the end. So it comes with two note, uh, two bookmarks so that you can mark your pages. And I think that's pretty much an archer and olive symbol there on the bookmark. So that's kind of nice. I like to have bookmarks in my notebooks because then I can reference certain pages really quickly, which is really nice. Okay. And then I'm going to load it up here and close that. This particular uh, Chatelaine, the closure has been a little loose. I have not noticed that with any of the other ones I've had. Um, and I think the um, little band might be a little bit small for this opening, but I don't think it would actually flop open. I think it's still pretty secure because it would have to slide all the way out. Okay, so there's that in there. And I'm gonna show those one more time and then close that up. And then I have some other samples in there that I can't show you yet. <laughs> so I wanna make sure I'm careful about that. So we'll put these off to the side. I think that I am going to store the markers in this container that it came in. I'm not gonna do that on camera, but, um, but it seems pretty good. And at some point I will try the mixing, but that might take a little time, obviously. But it's nice to have that option. 
Um, it seems like it could get a little messy and the whole cleanup process might be a little bit of a pain just from the description. Um, and also if you're going to switch colors and mix different colors, like are you going to have to rinse it out every time or are, is there going to be enough clean off when you just draw with the one mixed color to go ahead and mix another? You know, it, it seems like a little bit of a laborious process if you have to clean between each mix. But uh, but it's a really neat concept, and so far I think these markers are pretty good. I will probably give you an update after I've used them for a little while, and we'll go from there. All right, well, thanks for joining me today, and feel free to subscribe so that you can keep track of future videos, and have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.